Hi, welcome. Uh, I'm Evelyn Vanderhoop. Uh, I weave the Chiefs Robes of the Northwest Coast, Raven's Tail, and Naheem. Formline Chiefs Robe uh, that we call Naheem is often commonly called Chilkat. The Simsian people, they have a word for these ro Chiefs Robes, and that is Gwish Halite, and that uh, refers to the spirituality uh, and power of the robe in their language. Um, I'm weaving a Raven's Tail robe that has uh, Naheen elements in it, so I'm using both techniques. And so with that unique opportunity to show you uh, these different weavings, I've been producing these broadcasts here in Haida Gwaii during my quarantine. Um, in our culture, all along the coast, Clinkett's Haidas and Simsians, in order to be a good wife, a good mother, a good contributor to uh, the community, every woman was expected to be a weaver. Uh, we had a very hierarchical society uh, years ago, and um, people had uh, to be born into a um, a certain status to have privileges, different privileges. And so um, the robes were very special. And I think that the weaving of the robes was a specialty. We learned by watching our aunties and our mothers and uh, the women around us, um, we watched them weave. And that's how we learned, um, by, by sitting still and watching. And uh, so, in this time of um, isolation, I have um, felt like it was important. Um, who knows when the next uh, classroom workshop or apprenticeship will happen uh, during this pandemic time, and who knows how long the pandemic is going to last. If this pandemic might be affecting our world for a longer time than we might think. I hope not, but. I felt like uh, people are turning to Zoom and to the different uh, uh, ways to communicate in, digitally. And so I felt like in order for this rare art and the techniques to move on, that um, we should really share that in this new format. I certainly don't want the Naheen formline weaving of our coast to go into demise. Um, so I think it's important to keep um, showing the techniques and encouraging people to pick up this art. And it is a complicated art, but the stepping stones, the basic techniques are quite simple. So with uh, this introduction, um, I will continue weaving. So I talked about how uh, the traditional way of teaching was to just sit quiet by your uh, master weaver and um, watch and learn. So I'm going to uh, present this uh, video as I'm weaving um, with a story. So as you watch my hands move uh, in this video, I'm going to have uh, some text uh, showing you or describing what I'm doing. But um, I have a favorite story that I want to read and it was collected um, by John R. Swanton in the year of the 1900 to 1901, and it's found in the Haida text Masset dialect book um, that I am uh, fortunate enough to uh, own. It's a rare book, and some of these stories are just um, not really told very often. And so um, I will tell you the story that is one of my favorites. It's called The Story of Those Born at Lyellen. Okay. At People's Town, Hyas was a town chief, and Lucaslis was a man of cum. He lived with his friends. After he had lived there for a long time, Lucaslis wanted to gamble with Hyas, and he gambled with him, and only Lucaslis won. He won all of Hyas's things from him, and Hyas always wore a knife hung in front of him with which to kill people. And although he was very fond of his knife, he wagered it with him, and it was lost, and he refused to give it to him. Let us stop, said Hyas, and Lucaslis said, Good, 
That was the only word he uttered, because he was very glad of having won many things, so he did not care for the knife. And when it was calm, Lucasless set out to return to his friends, and he came to them. A great crowd of his friends were in the house with him. Have you any news? they said to him. No, said he, and after that he told the following news. I won everything from Hyas, but he would not give me the war knife that I won. He said, <clears throat> and his friends began to talk about it, and they said, what shall we do to him? They were very sad on account of it. He was a great chief, so Lucasus only said, I want to make a likeness of him on a big gambling stick I own. And the friends of Lucasus all said, good. And he began to make it, and he burned a likeness of Hyas on the gambling stick. And every time he gambled, when he threw out the gambling stick, he said, Wah, Hayas. And Hayas heard what that he was saying this every morning. They said to him, Lucasless has burned a likeness of you upon a gambling stick. He named it after you, for he was very sad on account of the war knife. Hayas said, Bring hither my friends, the chiefs, with the young men and the women, so that we can talk the thing over. And all entered his house and began to talk it over. They talked over what they should do to Lucasless. Hyas's sister was called Saga, Sadaga, oh, sitting, for, sitting far back behind her brothers. She kept crying. She was a very high-born woman. And, uh, and her other female friends also wept with her, for it was as, if, as though a person had been killed. Hayas said to his friends, It will be best for me to give away a great many things on account of him. And all his friends, the chiefs, agreed. We will go in canoes. All of you shall go with me. We will go in five canoes. When my property is all ready, I will also learn a song. And when this is done, we will go. So he spoke to his friends, and he had a blanket made. The women put figures on it. Close to the bottom were put Git al -Gadon. Swanton notes that this is an unidentified crest. Above was the representation of a black whale. There were only two figures on the blanket, and all, he also fixed his hat, and ravens were on opposite sides of the hat, and at the base of the tall dancing hat sat a frog, and his hat was finished. And his sister also made her blanket. Her blanket had the figure of a beaver upon it. It was big, and the two ravens on his hat had starfishes on their bills, and his sister's blanket was also finished, and Hayas had in one ear a long earring made of strung abalone shell. But on the other side, where he was going to speak to Lucasless, he was not going to wear one. And when the chiefs and the chief's sons spoke to him, he was going to turn the side of which he wore the earrings towards them. Then they put grease into hair seal stomachs, and all things were very full. Then ten big boxes were filled with the stomachs. They were going to put a big grease box into the canoe, and the grease box as named was named the sea. And he again called all his friends, the chiefs, and all went into the house. He said to them, I called you to tell you how many coppers I'm going to throw away on account of him. I am going to throw away ten coppers, for he has acted as if he had killed me, said he to his friends. And all his friends, the chiefs, said, Good, and they started away with him. In the evening they learned the songs, songs for giving away things, and at midnight they left him. All the men, all the women, and the children sang. Next evening they sang in the same way, and at midnight they all knew all the songs and started home. And presently, when Lucasless heard that Hyas was going to give away things on his account, he also began to make crests. He had a big tree cut off halfway up, and in that place he made a big eagle's nest, and he also made a big eagle. There was a place for one to go sit inside. Its tail was white, and Hyas also heard of it. They said to him, Lucasless has finished some crests, and Lucasless was also going to give away mountain goat wool on account of Hyas. He was going to put it inside of the eagle. Then Hyas started with his friends from People's Town in five canoes. Then they put two boxes into two canoes, and they put one big box into the one of Hyas. 
But Sadago went with him, for Sadago went with him, and they set out. And they stopped for a short time at Widja, Widja, a town on the northern coast of Graham Island, west of Masset Inlet, owned by the Widja Gitane people. He was going to borrow the hummingbird and Talgujau, unknown crest of Finnish, the name of the chief from whom the crests were actually obtained. The chief's name was resting his breast on a town, and they started away. And they came to where Lucaslis, his friends, live, and Hyas held up two coppers upon poles. Although he had brought ten, he fooled him by displaying two. And Hyas dressed himself up. He put on all of his crests. When he was ready, he concealed himself as he came along, and he let another person stand up in the canoe. And they also saw the preparations of Lucaslis. They saw a big eagle sitting upon a tree, and those who came along with Hyas did not sing. And Lucaslis said, How commonly dressed Hyas is! And they stopped in front of the town. And before Hyas stood up, they sang. He was in the middle of one of the five canoes, and he stood upon a big plank laid upon the canoes for him. <clears throat> and the name, name of Hyas's copper was Little Copper, and he sang again. But Lucasus did not sing, and the people of the town were on the beach looking at Hyas. And when he sang another song, the words were Big Copper, and he again sang, The head of all coppers, the head of all coppers, and he sang again. But that thing is bad, but that thing is bad, but that thing is bad, and he sang again. All of his friends sang for him. Stop, Gumsiwa, stop, Gumsiwa, Haya, Hai. All that time they did not put the copper into the sea. They also made the grease wait for one song. This song was called Precious Song, and he sang away this way. Waya hildam haye tsaga, waya hildam haye tsaga, waya dam haye tsaga means there are many coppers. And they threw the one copper into the sea. And they began to throw the stomachs into the sea from the five canoes. And Sadeguyo also poured grease from the box called sea into the water to assist her brother. And they came, they again began to sing songs for them. Coppers are many is what the song is like. And they threw Wehayetska into the sea. And he sang the song for it again. There are many coppers. Then they threw whale grease into the sea. Afterwards, he again sang for it. And they threw out cold copper. And he again sang for it. And he sang, and he also threw out another copper, and again he sang for it. <clears throat> he threw another copper into the sea, and he sang for it again. Wai hildam haye tsga, hai hildam haye sidstga. And he threw another copper into the sea, and he sang for it again. Thus he sang. And he again threw a copper into the sea. Abundance. He threw ten coppers into the sea. Meanwhile, they put all of the boxes of grease into the sea, and all that was in the hair seal stomachs. Meanwhile, Lucasus also threw down the wool. When he lifted it, the eagle's tail, it came down white in abundance, and his friends vied with one another in collecting the wool. Before he lifted its tail, he made a noise like an eagle. Then he lifted its tail again, and again it came down in abundance, and he called again, and then he raised its tail, and wool again came down from under its tail in abundance. And they were looking at Hyas's coppers. After Lucasus had done so a long time, his wool was all gone. Lucasus sat inside the eagle, and when he stopped, the visitors started off with high ass, and he did not use the things lent by him by resting his breast on a town.